Hey, what's happening, Mark Schmidt? Last night at Schmidt's podcast. <laughs> sort of. More of an announcement than a podcast today, I think. As you can probably tell as, I, as I'm talking, and you can probably see the running time. Although, as I say this, I have no idea what the running time is going to be. Who knows what this is going to turn out to be? Maybe this goes forever. If it does, then we'll be a yay. But if it doesn't, I'll say that's exactly what I thought was going to fucking happen. Um... But, you know, I will tell you this, you know, again, last night at Schmitty's, it's, it's a daily show. And I'll tell you this, I'm not doing Saturdays and Sundays. I, it doesn't make any sense to do a Saturday, Sunday podcast uh, because you guys are very busy. Everybody's out mowing lawns. Everybody's getting their seed catalogs. They're planting gardens. It's spring. Everybody's very happy with their lives. They're out in the sun basking in it. Although I guess it's snowing in the Midwest again. What the fuck, man? You know what? It's about time we said something to Jesus. He runs the weather, right? He runs the fucking weather machine unless he panned it off to one of his fucking idiots. Who's that? Paul? Probably Paul. They're all named Paul, aren't they? There's Peter and Paul and Judas and uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. I remember them clearly. Uh, uh, one of them is in charge of the weather, but we got to fucking talk to them about just getting everything squared away at certain times because everything's falling apart, man. Even here, I told you, here in California, I got mosquitoes, I got humidity. Although I haven't had it the last few days, but it was 76 degrees and I got the heat on because I'm a fucking, you know, I, I whatever. You know, I don't feel good. Um, well, I'll tell you this. Get this. I have a friend. Brace yourselves for this nonsense. Uh, <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid. What do I care? There's a spider who lives in my house who's my friend. And, uh, you know, I, I used to have a philosophy, I think I've told you this, where it was like, if you're in my house, you're fair game. You know what? It's me and you in a showdown. But I thought about that. And at some point, when I go to sleep, if I don't like see a cricket and then I go to sleep, then that cricket can think, ha ha, it's me and you in a showdown. And so he can take me out when I'm sleeping, and that sucks. You know, if we have the same philosophy, uh, kill or be killed, that's no way to live your life. So if somebody's in my house, I try to trap them, and I put them outside, right? If I see a spider or, or anybody else, I'm just like, you, hey, fellas, let's go. And I put them in a glass, and I dump them out in the garden, and everybody's happy. Because, it's because look, I, I'm too old to be killing shit. Who the fuck knows? And it also, you never know what the fuck's going to happen. I don't know if there's a Jesus or a fucking or a heaven or any of that bullshit. But everything we're told is they got a big guy at the gate, and I told you he's there, and he's got his book, and he looks through all your shit. What if there's a thing where they're like, hey, man, you know you killed 18,000 spiders? And who's to say that, you know, if you're the Hitler of spiders, you don't get into fucking heaven? That's possibility, right? Because you could just think to yourself, ah, you know, I kill all bugs on sight. That's who I am. I'm the bug murder man. I don't know if you want to brag about that. Don't put that on your Tinder bio or whatever the fuck. Try to keep that off Bumble or Hinge. Hey, guys, I'm the bug murder man. Nobody, ladies don't like that. You know what the ladies love? Cool James. Uh, but but as far as, you know, telling people you're a spider murderer, that's not good. And then, like I said, you go up there and there's fucking St. Pete and he's got a book and he's like, you killed 18,000 spiders. You're the Hitler of spiders. You're not getting into heaven. And you're like, dude, it was just, it was just spider. Or even worse. Oh, what if they did this? Here's a bit. This is pretty fun. What if you went to heaven and they were like, oh man, you killed 18,000 spiders. And you're like, I didn't know that, that wasn't the case. And they were like, doesn't fucking matter, man. You can't be, you can't be the Hitler of spiders and get into heaven. But we'll put you in spider heaven. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and then you got to go on a fucking elevator and go to fucking spider heaven and whatever they're going to do to you. Maybe they kill you a bunch of times. They crap you in a web and you got to say, help me. Who the fuck knows? So there's a spider who lives in my house now. And, uh, and he, have, he and I have crossed paths several times. Uh, here's where he lives. He lives in my shower, like around my shower. There's no web, but he lives in the windowsill. Okay. And I think I told you I want new screens in my house. I want all this stuff, right? So I, I the bathroom screen, and this, and this is completely true. It has not been changed in the entire time I've lived here. I've lived here since 1997. In 27 years, they have not changed the bathroom screen. They haven't changed the bedroom screens. You know, and I never asked them because they're not fucked up. They're not broken. But I, clearly, something's going out if a spider finds his way in, right? Listen, this fucking guy, Gerald, the spider, that's what I called him. He gets in. Uh, but here's the deal with, the, with him. If, you know, if I don't know he's there... That's fine. Live your life, man. Uh, if he builds a web around my soap, then we got a problem. And I, gotta, I, I ruin his web. I don't kill him, though. But I'm like, dude, i got to teach you a lesson now. Don't do that shit. But what he's been doing... <laughs> Sorry, yawning. And I'm... Uh, dudes, I've been sleeping so much. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, but, like, 
when I get in the shower now, and it's my own fault. So now I have to, it's happened like three of the past five showers, so I have to check now. But I'll turn the shower on, and then uh, what? I, 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 we were in clothes, and I'll turn the shower on, and then I'll take my clothes off, and I'll hop into the shower, and I'll start getting clean. And uh, what it is, I, you know, I get all soaked up with water, I let all the water run all over me, here's a bed. Nobody gives a shit how I shower, but I'm telling you. And then, uh, you know, the first thing is you put shampoo. I put in shampoo and then I put in mouthwash, whatever. So I, tur- I have to I have my back to the nozzle. First, my, I'm facing the nozzle. Then I, I open my eyes and I look and my head will turn and look at the wall. And this has happened now three times out of the past five showers. He's in the shower, like doing some exploring and like walking around on the wall. So when I turn around, he's staggering around because he's getting splashed with water and he's all mucked up and he's tiny. If he was a big spider, I might be worried. But he's totally shrimpy, right? He's like a little fucking, uh, like a, I don't know, like a sprinkle on a cupcake. He's like that big. He's not su- He's not big at all, man, but he's got eight legs. Imagine if he had a sprinkle on a cupcake, but it had eight legs and 40 eyes, whatever the fuck spiders have. So I see him, and the funny part is he's all drunk, you know, because he's staggering up the wall. There's water splashing him. I don't even know how the fuck he stays alive. So I just, I just put my finger out, and he climbs on my finger, and then I flip him into this windowsill so he's safe from the water, right, so he can stay alive. But... I it's and it's it's not his fault. I mean, he's I can't expect him to stay in the windowsill. He's not a fucking stay at home spider. He wants to explore. He wants to see what the fuck's going on, man. And maybe he wants to look for a spider friend because I do. I do think that sometimes where I'm like, I should put him outside because that's where more spiders are. And maybe he'll be friendly and happy. But also, I think I told you, I, I don't want to put him out there. And all the other spiders are like we've been waiting for you, man. And they fucking beat Gerald up. And then I'm fucking pissed because I got a spider knocked around. That's not good. Uh, so instead, I just I choose to keep him in my shower. I I. But I will tell you this, man, spiders are fucking resilient because he won't get off my finger. That's another thing. Like, I, I you know, it's not like, you know, how you can, like a, a cat will be on your lap or whatever. And then you can like the cat will go off your lap. Well, spider gets on your finger and then you put him where he's going to walk. You're like, here, buddy, walk into the windowsill. And he just starts walking on your finger and he keeps walking up your arm. And you're like, dude, look, wrong way, Feldman. Like, get the fuck off of here and get into the windowsill. I'm trying to help you here, Gerald. And uh, he, he, you know, he continues to walk in circles around my finger. So then I have to flip my finger you know like you like you're flicking uh uh somebody in the nose or whatever like a you know the, the back of their earlobe so i flick him off and so then that that just shoots him at high fucking high speed like high velocity into the screen he bangs off the fucking screen and he lands and i can see him he almost says like a like he fucking you know he moves his spider head and he starts walking around in the windowsill so i'm i'm happy that he's so resilient you know what i mean because it's like i'm i'm trying to be good to him and i'm trying to get him out of the water because i don't want him to get washed down the fucking drain Because, look, I don't know if you ever heard that song, (laughs) but it doesn't end well for the spider. Uh, (laughs) And this is, I'll tell you, if there has ever been an itsy bitsy spider, Gerald is an itsy bitsy spider. He's so tiny and he's super cute. He's a cute little spider, but I don't want him to die. So I've saved him three times out of my last five showers. But, But when I say saved him, I've just moved him out of the fucking hurricane. Because, I, again, I can't even imagine. He doesn't have like a, like a big brain. He's a spider. All right? They're not fucking smart. You can And you can fight me all you want. Come at me now and be like, you don't know the intelligence of spiders. Fuck off. The, the spider, this spider is the size of a Rice Krispie. If it has any brain power at all, it, first of all, it wouldn't be back in the fucking shower every time I go in there, for fuck's sake. It would realize a way to get the fuck out. Um, it's just, it's on autopilot. It's on spider autopilot at that point. It doesn't even know what the fuck it's doing. Uh, and I know you're thinking, well, if, if you don't think that they're that smart, then why would you think he'd kill you in your sleep? Well, I mean, because he's still an animal, man. He's still like got a fucking uh, attack mode based into him. Everybody does. I don't care how small they are. Rice Krispie or not, man, they'll fuck you up when you're sleeping. And But Gerald and I, we've got an understanding. <laughs> Gerald and I, we've got an understanding. He climbs on my finger and I slap him at high speed into the screen and then he just hangs around until I take another shower and then I got to walk him off the fucking wall again because that's how it works. Um... So I've so, but I've saved him. I've saved him three times. I don't even know how the fuck I got to talking about Gerald the spider. Uh, it, not not to be confused with Boris the spider. Please don't you dare. Uh, so uh, last night, you know, we talked. We certainly we did a lot of talking here at uh, last night at Schmidt's, and we and we were all over the place. We talked about the Ghostbusters show, and we did all these things. And also, you may have known that there was a possibility that I was under the weather. I think, and you can probably still tell now. My throat is a little, uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, I got up today. It was funny. I, I woke, so I woke up today 
All right. Now, last night I took the Aeroflu again, and I got eight hours of sleep, and I woke up. And uh, I, well, all right, but before that, I shouldn't even talk about waking up. I went to bed, uh, and I woke up after a couple hours in a puddle. Like, like my pillowcase and the sheets were soaked, like soaking wet. Like you could, you could wring out the pillowcase. I was sweating so much. And I was like, this is fucking weird. Like, I don't know what the hell's happening here. And sometimes I've done that. If I have a fever, you know, you go to bed and then your fever breaks, uh, while you're sleeping and then you, you, but you sweat it out, that kind of thing. Right. Well, but this was like something I've never experienced because I woke up in, it felt like I was in. I don't want to say shallow water, but it clearly I was in and it didn't even feel like I, it wasn't like I wet the bed, you know what I mean? Cause it was all like chest and head and all that stuff. Um, I, and I was like, what the fuck, man? So I woke up and I had to change my sheets because I couldn't go back to sleep in that bed. It was, it was just fucking grim. So I changed the sheets and, uh, and I went back and got some, I slept another like four hours or whatever the fuck. And I got up and, uh, took a shower and I should say when I woke up, you know, I, I I think I told you I had sinus, I had a sore throat, I had a headache, I had body aches. Uh, I didn't know what the fuck it was. It was just, but it was shit. I had this same thing like a month ago, okay? But today when I woke up, in addition to the sweating a child's wading pool full of sweat into my bed, uh, my throat was in pain. Like, it wasn't a sore throat where you're like, oh, that's weird. Uh, like, even now, it's it it's fucking raw and burning. And I, and I don't know. I'm like, what the fuck? And sure, I've got lozenges, and I'm trying to do that, and uh, and I'm like, I'm trying to make it work, and drinking, uh, like I said, Theraflu, but also ice cold water because I read all these things, whatever the fuck, you don't care. So, uh, but I woke up today, and it was like it was, it felt like my throat was filled with aquarium rocks, because <laughs> like I swallowed it, it was like <sighs> it was like real crunchy, fucking weird. I don't even know how to explain it. Sorry, I'm I'm drinking water as we speak. Um. And then that in the sweat, and I was like, all right. So then I got up, and and I woke up. I should say I woke up. It was 4 o'clock because I went to bed at, like, fucking 6. Uh, or no, yeah, 6, 6.30, and I got up at, like, 4. And uh, I'm sitting there, and, and I was I was warm. Like, it was like I felt hot still. I said, that's strange. So I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my temperature. So I did, and uh, my temperature was 100 again, which doesn't make any sense because yesterday it was 101. And uh, I was like taking the Theraflu and I'm like, well, it'll go away. And then I was still at 100 today, even after the thing where it broke overnight. And I was like, this is fucking strange. So Pat had asked me if I had COVID and I said no, because I had tested a month ago when I was sick. Uh, But the fact that I had a fever two days in a row and it wouldn't go away, my head, I'm like, "Eh, I got to try. You know what I mean? So and I should and also I'll tell you this, you know, I, I don't have a lot of money. All right, nobody, nobody does. We're all living check to check. We're all living whatever the fuck. So when I tell you I'm taking Theraflu, please know this is Theraflu that ex- has expired. <laughs> like my medicine is all expired. This stuff, it went bad in 22. Not bad, but I mean, it's, you know, it was used best by 2022. So I'm, I'm taking that Theraflu. So I think there's still medicine in it. I don't know. It seems to still be working. Uh, but I have that. So that's what I've been taking. And then I have all those COVID tests they gave us in like 2020, the free ones that the government mailed you. So those are four years old. They're in, under my sink. And, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't needed them. But I was like, all right. I tested with them one like a month ago. It um, was fine. So then I said, all right, I'll take Because I've tested like four times in the course of four years where I thought something might be up. And then it turned out I was okay. Sorry, I get the hiccups now. So, uh, so then... Uh, today, I was like, well, I'll test. You know, if I get a fever for two days, that might be a thing. And uh, I pulled out the fucking test. And there's like, and then there's the, look, I, I'm not a fucking nurse. You know what I mean? I, I'm not fucking one of the guys from fucking Grey's Anatomy. I'm not Dr. Dreamy, McDreamy, whatever the fuck. Because you open it up and there's a roadmap. Like, that's the thing. It's not like spit in this and we'll tell you if you got it. You know what I mean? Which would be fine. But no, it's like you got to pull out this thing. And then you got to determine which test you have. Do you have the one with the the juice or the one without the juice? I'm going to sneeze here. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and then you got to determine whether you got to dump the. If you got the one with the juice, you got to dump into the tube. And then you got to take the swab and you got to put it in your nose 15 times in either nostril. Then you got to put it in and squeeze all oh, that. You know, and then, and look, I recognize that it's not that big a deal. 
particularly not for a guy who's saving a spider's life four times a week. All right, I understand that there's there's it's not that complicated, but when you're sitting there with like a hundred degree fever and they're like, all right, insert slot A into slot B and dump the juice from slot C into tube D, you're just like, man, just fucking tell me if I got it. That's it. That's all. Can't I just spit in an envelope and mail it to you fucking guys? Like you're, you, you know, I can do that and find out if I was married to a Viking. But now you got to fucking make me do this. These hoops I got to jump through. What the fuck? So sure enough, I I bust out and so I will tell you this. I get out the test and it turns out which test do I have? I have the test where the juice is separate from the tube and I have to dump the juice into the tube. So I dump the juice into the tube and they're like. There's two lines, and if it goes over the first line, you're okay, but uh, that's fine. But but don't do a test if it's under the first line because that's not enough juice to get an re- accurate reading. And I'm like, all right. And because these tests are four years old, I don't know if it just fucking, if the liquid has dissolved or evaporated, but I dumped it in, and it's only halfway to the first line. And And now I'm like, oh, fuck. So luckily there's two tests in every box, and I have a bunch of, I have like six tests, so then I just open the second test and I crack open the fucking juice and I dump that in the tube as well. So now I've got enough to go over the first line. And then they're like, put the swab in your nose, put the swab in each nostril 15 times, then you put it in the tube, stir it 15 times, and you close the tube and you dump it. And then you've got the little you know pregnancy test. And it says, put three drops in the hole and wait 15 minutes. And it said, do not check it uh, before 15 minutes. And also, do not check it after a half an hour. 15 minutes is the sweet spot for checking this to see if you've got it. And I said, all right. So uh, I took the test and uh, dropped this. I dropped three drops. One, two. And by the time the second drop hits, one of the lines immediately pops open. <laughs> like, I mean, intensely, it just starts to light up. And I'm like, oh, boy. So I put in the third drop. And then I put down the test. And I start to clean up, and I'm I'm talking 15 seconds after I put all of the drops in there, the second line lights up, and then the two of them continue to get more intense. Like I, I if you if you see that it's it literally, it's it's so bright, like the lines are so bright. I think I have COVID 20. I I don't I think I skipped right past 19, and the test was like fuck you, you've got COVID 20, buddy. Uh, because the lines within, you know, it says 15 minutes within 15 fucking seconds. I knew I had it and I looked at it and I was like, God damn it because I've never had it in five years. I've never had it. And so then your brain, you start to go, well, all right, where did this get come from? I, cause I drove, I drove Sunday. I, you know, I drove all the time. I drove Friday set hardcore. I drove Monday hardcore all night. Uh, and that's when I started to feel. I mean, you guys, it's funny. You can track this from the fucking show. You can listen to whatever episodes we do over the past, past few days, and you can hear me getting progressively fucking worse. Uh, but I just, I so there you go. I have COVID. And what's really funny is, you know, I was supposed to go to Denver this week to see my buddy Dennis. I was flying today, which is the third, and uh, I was going to be at his place the third through the ninth. And we talked on Sunday and. You know, financially, things are a little weird. I've been talking to some government agencies and people like that. And I, there's some results that are not coming out uh, copacetic. So whatever. I'm trying to figure some stuff out. So I said to him, I go, hey, we talked Sunday. I had told him a week ago. I was like, we got to maybe, you know, let's reconnoiter right before I'm supposed to fly out and see what happens. And sure enough, I was like, look, man, it just kind of makes sense to postpone this till the fall, like maybe October. And he was like, that's cool. Uh, and then the funny thing was, like, I did that. And then two days later... I wind up with a fucking 101 degree fever and then I, and then sure enough, a day later I've got ah, double line COVID and I, and so here I sit and, and so now, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I don't mean to be, uh, this dude, like, you know, this show, like I said, is always going to be about me talking about movies or, you know, all that pop culture stuff. Uh, I didn't do anything today. <laughs> I found out I had COVID and I was like, fuck. And I had to go. And, and again, it's so fun. this is all the weird and convenient shit. You know, they paved my parking lot. So I'm now parked on the street. So now I had to run out to the store to get more medicine. Cause I was down to one thing of medicine and you know, I had to get some from this century too. That didn't fucking help. So sure enough, I had to walk, you know, and I, I feel fine. I will tell you, let me tell you this. I feel fine. 
I'm completely tired. Like that's that's the one thing I am. I, I don't know how many of you have had it because it's the thing is I know, I know and my nose is running so bad. I know a lot of you guys uh, have had it and been through it. My friends have had it twice. I have a friend who's had it three times. You know what I mean? And it just it's just I don't know if I'm just lucky. I I don't know. Uh, I've been cautious, but also you know me. I think I'm unkillable, and I'm, I've gotten all the vaccines. I'm vaxxed up to the fucking hilt, and. And so uh, it never even bothered me. I never even worried about it. So uh, once I found out I had it, though, you know, I had to call. I called my buddy Pat because he's had it a few times. He just had it recently uh, around Christmas time, and he had to cancel his whole vacation. Like his family went without him because he. And he also he told me it was funny. He he had the same deal where he was waking up in just pools of sweat and having to change his bedding. Man, it's fucking crazy. And then he was fatigued for a week. He said he couldn't even fucking move. Um. You know, Siegel's had it. Guy, you know, all my friends have had it. Lenny had it. I mean, everybody's got it. I just, I've been, because I, you know, when it first hit, I've talked about this on the show. They, you know, it was a death sentence for fat guys. That was that what they always said. And I have no insurance, so like I didn't, I, I wasn't going to be able to go to a fucking uh, a doctor. I'd have to go to some clinic, and then you know, in fucking L.A., you never know. You're just sitting there next to a fucking guy with a goat. You have no fucking idea who's going to see you, who's not going to see you. Two people with a parakeet, one person with a goat, four old people. You know, it's like you're like, I don't even know if I'm going to get in today and see these people. Um, but I, so I called Pat. I called uh, my friend Suzanne. She's a nurse, and just to find out, I was like, look, what do I have to do here? Like, what is, what's my situation? She goes, well, you know, you've you've done real good about the vaccines. You've taken care of yourself. Because I also I also Google it. It just said at this point, it's rest, fluids. And painkillers or medicine. So if you basically just treat it like the flu. So uh, that's what I do. I'm going to treat it like the flu. Now, uh, I, I will say I don't, you know, there's the, the, the day thing is floating. It used to be 10 days, then it was five days, then it was three days. Um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's when you're asymptomatic. Can you go out? Can you do this? Blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, you know. I got to drive. I mean, I <laughs> I make my money day by day. You know what I mean? I don't have some job I can't afford to be like, oh, I'll take two weeks off or whatever the fuck. Um, I'm really lucky this happened when it happened because I drove like a motherfucker, made my rent, made my car insurance. You know what I mean? So, so right now, I'm in a lull <laughs> where nothing's due for like eight or nine days. So, I mean, if I have to bite the bullet and do nothing, then I can bite the bullet and do nothing. But I don't want to fucking do that. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to be one of those assholes like, ah, I'm more important than everybody. And I go drive around sick. I can't fucking do that. Right. So uh, hoping because because again, like I said, right now, uh, other than the fact that my throat feels like it has a branding iron in it and I'm fucking tired as fuck, uh, I feel fine. You know, the body aches are gone. Headache is gone. Um I wouldn't even say this is something you hear. Like I said, my nose is running or whatever the fuck. Um, but that's just, you know, just normal, uh, you know, sinus flu, whatever the fuck. Uh, you know, if anything, I, I'm mad because it interfered with this. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to. And again, I, you know, this show was also supposed to be. I was like, oh, it'll be like 20 minutes stings or whatever the fuck. And then it turned into something more than that. And I just talked to whatever. But, uh, but I have nothing pop culture to talk to you about today. I mean, I could. I could talk about... <laughs> there's a million movies and things that I've seen, but I uh, I don't feel like it. i got to be honest with you. I mean, i, I got to go to bed. So, um, or at least be not, you know... And, and look, I, but I also don't want you to be like, oh, you've betrayed us with your... Uh, you were going to do a show. I know, I know, I know. Okay, and, and I, I don't think I didn't laugh because I thought my body was like, what the fuck are you doing? Three podcasts in a week? What the fuck? And it knocked me my dick in the dirt. It was like, fuck you, man. Who do you think you are? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I, you know, trying a new thing. And they're like, ah, oh, sorry, buddy. Like, like this is, I've worked so hard at talking that my body was like, fuck you. And it invited COVID in. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I don't know, man. Sorry, I'm yawning. Sorry, I'm I'm my throat is burning. Sorry for every other goddamn thing. So uh, you're you're all very kind and tolerant. I'll be back tomorrow, uh, which will be Friday, and then there, I'll be back Monday. But I'm not doing. I'm not gonna do. I was gonna put it up to a vote. Honestly, Saturdays and Sundays, and uh, and then in my brain, I was just like, yeah, you know what? Nobody needs seven days of me. I barely need seven days of me for fuck's sake. 
I, I you know, five days of me is more than enough. So we'll we'll do Monday through Friday. We'll do this show, and then uh, and again, still plans for the you know, like I said, when a longer podcast when I get time and I can actually sit down and I don't have a, a throat full of fucking burning embers. That'd be fine. Uh, but I do appreciate you sticking around and listen as long as you did. And uh, yeah, man, you know, I again, I I I know I probably sound different. I hope it doesn't sound terrible. Um, and and I don't feel awful, but I do feel gross. Um, you know, I took two showers today just because I'm fucking sweating in my house, and it's just it's just. And you guys have been through it. You guys have had it. I, you know, again, I'm not bitching and moaning. Everybody's had it except me. I think I'm the last guy on the planet who didn't have it. And that was pretty. Actually, that was kind of a badge of honor. Like I enjoyed being the guy who never got it. And I, and also, I've gone to concerts and fucking malls, and I fucking you know been all over the place, different cities, traveled airports. I drive people all the fucking time, and I never got it. I was like, yeah, man. You know what? I think I'm the guy who's never going to get it. Wouldn't that be cool if I was the guy who never got it? And then, sure enough, if you, I'm going to put up a picture of these fucking lines, and you'll be like, oh, okay, that no, you have it. You have it so crazy. It's, it's like it's all of the letters in COVID are capitalized. That's how bad I fucking got it, which is crazy. Uh, all right. So thank you. Uh, last night at Schmitty's was spent dozing and sweating. And uh, and hopefully uh, tomorrow night at Schmitty's will be different. But uh, you're nice to listen this long to a guy whose throat sounds like he's been fucking blowing a spike bat, um, which I don't even know what the fuck that means. That's a wrestling term, a spike bat. But why would I be throating that? Who's going to throw a spike bat? Me? Probably. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to go uh, let's sleep fucking ever. Why why can't we just sleep forever? That's what Tool would say. And uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Ah!